ဒီနေ့ကအလဲဆိုတယ်ဒီကလန်းနေရိတ်နဲ့ပတ်သက်တာလေးကိုဒီကတွားပြီးတော့နားထောင်ကြမယ်ပေါ့เนาะဒီက
number t square root eight times alpha zero. And sometimes you also see people use um, a learning rate that decreases in discrete steps. Where for some number of steps, you have some learning rate. And then after a while, you decrease it by one half, after a while, by one half, after a while, by one half. And so this is a discrete staircase. So, so far, we've talked about some, using some, you know, formula to govern how, how far the learning rate changes over time. One other thing that people sometimes do is manual decay. And so if you're training just one model at a time, and if your model takes many hours or even many days to train, what some people would do is just watch your model as it's training over you know, a large number of days, and then manually say, oh, it looks like your learning rate slowed down. I'm going to decrease alpha a little bit. Of course, this works. This manually controlling alpha, really tuning alpha by hand, hour by hour, day by day. This works only if you're training only a small number of models, but sometimes people do that as well. So now we have a few more options for how to control the learning rate alpha. Now, in case you're thinking, wow, this is a lot of hyperparameters, how do I select amongst all these different options? I will say, don't worry about it for now. And next week, we'll talk more about how to systematically choose hyperparameters. Um, for me, I would say that learning rate decay is usually lower down on the list of things I've tried. Setting alpha, just a fixed value of alpha, and getting that to be well tuned has a huge impact. Learning rate decay does help. Um, sometimes it can really help speed up training, but it is a little bit lower down my list in, in terms of the things I would try. But next week, when we talk about hyperparameter tuning, you see more systematic ways to organize all of these hyperparameters and how to efficiently search amongst them. So that's it for learning rate decay. Um, finally, I was also going to talk a little bit about local optima and saddle points in neural networks so you can have a little bit better intuition about the types of optimization problems your optimization algorithm is trying to solve when you're trying to train these neural networks. Let's go on to the next video to see that. ว่าดีฮะอินทิวเอชั่นเนี่ยเลสบอลจ้ะเลยบ่เนาะดีมาด้วยอะไรส่วนตัวอันนี้ดูว่าแม้แต่อันนี้ไม่รู้ชื่อ
ဒီဟာလေးကပါဒီဟာလေးကိုဘာဖို့လားပါလေဘူးဒီမှာဆိုရင်အစ်ပိုနန်ရှီရှိမယ်အဲ့ဒီဟာလေးဒီဟာလေ
zero or near zero, the surface is quite flat. You can actually take a very long time, you know, to slowly find your way to maybe this point on the plateau, and then because of the random perturbation of the level, right, maybe then finally, I'm going to switch to pen colors and clarity, the algorithm can then find its way off the plateau. And that's to take this very long, slow path before it's found its way here, and it could get off this plateau. So the takeaways from this video are, first, you're actually pretty unlikely to get stuck in bad local optimal, so long as you're trading a reasonably large neural network. So you have a lot of parameters, and the cost function j is defined over a relatively high dimensional space. But second, that plateaus are a problem, and they can actually make your learning pretty slow. And this is where algorithms like momentum or RMS prop or Adam can really help your learning algorithm as well. And these are scenarios where more sophisticated optimization algorithms, such as Adam, can actually speed up the rate at which you could move down the plateau and then get off the plateau. So because neural networks are solving optimization problems over such high dimensional spaces, to be honest, I don't think anyone has great intuitions about what these spaces really look like. And our understanding of them is still evolving. But I hope this gives you some better intuition about the challenges uh, that the optimization algorithms really face. So that, congratulations on coming to the end of this week's content. Please take a look at uh, this week's quiz as well as the program exercise. I hope you enjoy practicing some of these ideas in this week's program exercise. And I look forward to seeing you at the start of next week's videos. Okay, in the uh, early days of deep learning, people used to worry about... And uh, you know, some Parma, Parma, Loma, Yim, or not, the Parma, the new robot, the deep planet, Yan Shem Sars and Alon, not the dramatic problem, you to a Tijal to Nenebon, to a Dianapata, to a assumption to Nate and Yoda as a Boba, Trail to Doma Hobona, Yas when you don't get Bonan, you listen to your Nettia, and you take some tea, go to the new Hale, to Nimbon, you tell us, and you know, I don't know. You know, we can say about what I want to do. The new Dimas and Goba, Dimas, that Dimas. ตัวนี้ซื้อตะมานเนี่ยสุดที่อ่ะเลยตัวที่ก็เปลี่ยวขึ้นไปเลยตัวนี้ตัวนี้ปมขึ้นตัวนี้ปมขึ้นตามเน
ဒီဘာဒီဝိတ်ဒီဝိတ်တူမှာဒီကလေးလာခဲ့ရဟာရဲ့ဘာပါမလဲဆိုတော့အဲဟုတ်ကေအဲဒီနောက်လေးလေလ
ဆက်ချောက်ကြောင်းရှိရဆိုတော့ကားတုံးစနစီတွားခိုင်းမှာဆိုရင်ဒီဒီနန်းတက်ကြောင်းကိုဘာစကားနစီးပဲနစီးတ
ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့ဒီအဲ့
ဟုတ်ရှာဒီနေ့မှာနောက်တစ်ခုပြောဆရာရှိတာကဒီလိုမီးနဲ့မရှာဘူးနဲ့နောက်မေးကွေးရှင်းတုံးမဆိုတော့
ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้ไอ้
ဒီစတဲပွိုင်းနဲ့ကိုယ်တိုက်ပြီးတော့ကြောက်စရာမရှိဘူးဒါဖြစ်တော့လာဆိုတော့ဟိုဟိုတော့ရဲ့အကယ